Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and in today's video, we are going to briefly discuss the neurophysiology and diagnosis making of cervicogenic headaches. Now, cervicogenic headaches have been classified by the International Headache Society 2013 as headaches of secondary variety, which means that cervicogenic headaches are actually triggered due to any pathology or problem lying in the cervical spine. Now the most common problem that has been reported in the cervical spine that results in cervicogenic headache is the altered mechanics of the C1, C2 spine. Now altered mechanics and reduced mobility in the C1, C2 joint can often result in the suboccipital muscles and fascia becoming too tight which in turn leads to compression over the greater occipital nerve which results in cervicogenic headaches. Now what is important for the physiotherapy students to understand is that how actually a problem that is originating in the cervical spine is resulting in headaches around the regions of the head and face. Now this is so because the C1, C2 and C3 spinal nerves have merger over the trigeminothalamic pathway or the descending tract of trigeminal nerve. And because of this merger of the nociceptive afferents of the trigeminal nerve and that of the cervical nerves at the level of the trigeminothalamic pathways, often any pain or dysfunction in the upper cervical spine can be felt as a pain in the head and face. Another interesting information about the cervicogenic headache is the pain dysfunction or trigger points which are present in the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid muscle can also be referred as headaches. Now this is so because of the convergence of the sensory motor fibers of the spinal accessory nerve with the C1, C2 and C3 spinal nerve which in turn gets merged at the level of the trigeminothalamic pathway. And so we can often have patients with trigger points in these two muscles triggering as headaches. So now let's move on with the diagnosis making of cervicogenic headache. So now to confirm that the headache is actually originating from the cervical spine, we are going to use the cervical flexion rotation test. So now the therapist is going to hold the cervical spine of the patient from the base of the skull and then ask the patient to move towards the head end so that the head is cleared of the couch. So now the therapist is going to perform passively the full physiological flexion of the cervical spine so as to bias the rotational movements at the upper cervical spine. So now with the head remaining supported in the flexion position, the therapist is going to perform the cervical rotation test to one side and is going to ask the patient whether performance of the cervical rotation increases or triggers the patient's symptom. If the patient's symptoms are increased or triggered, then it is a confirmation for the presence of cervicogenic headache. Next, the rotational testing is going to be performed on the other side and the rotational ranges will be compared and checked. Often it is seen that the cervical rotation movements are restricted on the side of the dysfunction and that is what we need to treat for managing cervicogenic headaches. In our next video on cervicogenic headaches, we are going to cover the four important treatment techniques to manage such patients. Do keep motivating us with your comments and feedback. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.